Good afternoon. My name is Ciro Rios, Professor of Electrical and Biomedical Engineering at the Bryan University. I have the honor to present the senior project of my advanced students. Our senior project, and with me, we have uh, Jonathan Anderson and Sayyid Zadja Masood and Clark Baptist. Yes, uh, we've been, uh, for the past six months, we've been going pretty much mm -hmm. on this project. And uh, first of all, we want to thank Professor Hernandez for the help that he provided us in the first term of this project. And then we also want to thank uh, <coughs> Professor Rios for the continuation of this project in the last two months. What we are here today is, is what common for us every day when we commuting is the traffic jam that we sometimes, we always have to deal with. So in order for us to try to implement our situation or have less time in the road and get more time to do what we need to do, our team right here come with uh, a traffic based density where we don't have to wait for a light whenever the, the light don't have to turn green in a lane where there is no cars. I'm sure most of us already see those things happen. So our project here is pretty much simple. I'm not gonna get into detail into it right now, but we have people that are gonna explain all this for us. Now we have uh, Clark that's going to explain to us what and any type of uh, device that included in this project. Okay, good evening everyone. I'm with Clark Baptiste. Okay, as you see here, as you see here, this is what our project basically contains. As you see to the right, you have some cables, you have some resistors, you have our Arduino board, the breadboard, our jumper cables, cables to power the, the Arduino, and some LED lights, and, and our battery pack to power the Arduino when we're testing out our code for our project. Okay, as I said before, we had the jumper cables, the LED lights, your power pack, cable, the Arduino, resistors, your breadboards, so forth, mm -hmm. and motor, DC motor and a photo cell um, adapter. Okay, as you see here, this, this here is the, the technical specs of the kit itself. As you see here, the microcontroller, the model of that is the AT Mega 328P. The operating voltage is at five volts. The input is seven to 12 volts. The input voltage limit is between six to 20 volts and so forth and so forth. Okay, this here is our blueprint of how we started, how we gonna go about putting our, uh, our prototype together this little bit. Uh, we will have sensors here, here, and here, north, south, east, west. Um, for example now, if there's any obstruction that is uh, in front of the, the sensor, the, the green light will stay on within 30 seconds. And the sensor uh, level with the board is between 10 to 30 centimeters. And the range between the IR sensor is between to 300 to 600. And now Jonathan's gonna focus. So like we said, we stated before, um, we wanted to use um, 12 sensors, but it, it, what made it easier for us was using just four. But in the real world, we're going to use um, 12 sensors to um, get a much better reading for the, for the traffic. Applications. Uh, we're going to need no traffic inspectors, but we could use uh, uh, microcontroller inspectors, obviously, so we can make sure that everything is working properly. Uh, the traffic should run efficiently, uh, avoid unnecessary traffic jams. <coughs> the work by the microcontroller will do uh, will be done by the circuit. Um, sensors program which is called to the microcontroller, save a considerable amount of time, and public commute inconvenience. 
So before we started, we wanted to make sure that everything worked well and where we wanted the uh, sensors, the resistors, and the um, LEDs where we wanted them to be plugged in. So we started off with fritzing. This is a great program that we found. So when we started, we just started plugging in everything to like A1, A0, and making sure that's where we wanted it to be. And this is how we wanted it to be on the breadboard once we started, once we moved from the breadboard onto the bigger uh, platform. So we started off with just two lanes, making sure that the LEDs and sensors worked, and um, it, worked, it worked perfectly. There's another uh, picture here of what we had in the beginning stages. We went from uh, two lanes, and then we started working with the other four lanes. And here we have the board. Uh, Jackie created this magnificent board here. Um, here we have the breadboard. We put it here to the side. And then we have sensor, um, we have cables over here running all the way to the bottom, connecting to these uh, traffic lights right here. And then over here, it's a little bit dark, but you, over here we have our sensors right here, 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 and here. We have our sensors. Operation. Operation for the um, software design that we had for our program. So the default is 20 seconds, and our high is 50 seconds. So we will start the program. The uh, default setting for the traffic light for each side is 20 seconds or 14 to 20 seconds. Um, then we would check the infrared inputs, zero for green, one for no change. Turn light green for a side with high input from the sensor. Choose the appropriate delay based on density. Then we will go on to the check sensor for low frequency and commence end of delay and we go right back around. See, uh, each, uh, at each uh, intersection, sensors are placed in the proximity of the signal light, as we showed before. And I will pass it on to Saeed. Uh, the risks uh, identified with uh, the system is something could go wrong with the, the wiring itself. That's why it would be always beneficial to have a maintenance officer checking up on the system. Because since it employs a microcontroller, and wiring to the sensor itself. And of course, in the real life environment, environment we'll be using different sensors as well with better range and better accuracy for the ranges and more sensors. Uh, placement of sensors is always optimal for our project since it's a smaller prototype. We were placed in the middle of the median on the side. In real life environments, it'll be better to actually place it on the reflectors on the road itself on, on, on the road itself, so it can sense the vehicle passing over it. Okay, let's go to the next. This is our, how we started our project, uh, and our gang chart for it. We started our project with recent selections five months back. We chose this project, and we moved on to our project design, and then implementation in the uh, past couple of months. It took us basically five to six months to get everything sorted out. <clears throat> uh, in practice, um, in real life right now, people use traffic cameras. What happens with traffic cameras uh, is that sometimes it's, they don't sense all the traffic density that is on the road, or they incorrectly judge the traffic density. Our sensors will be more optimal, optimally used on the roads because it will actually sense the vehicles passing over them so we'll count better with better accuracy. And obviously, when you can judge the traffic system and see the density on the roads, it will save more time for the commuters and daily life. We won't turn on the lights, green, uh, lights for lower density traffic uh, areas of the, the roads, and so on and so forth. These were the reference we used. Now I'm gonna go over and show you the real project. Before any question, this is the project that we come to after three months. Please know, and this moment, me and Ty is going to be the one with boy and me. Yeah. Exactly. Um, the only sure. question I have before you is, oh, that's what I said is, it, po is, it, is, it, is it possible to uh, have a system to where you could always monitor this? Like, would it be easy to tap in and monitor this system? To where you go, we go. Okay. We go okay, this is how our traffic system is. This is uh, the brilliant work of Jackie building this prototype. That's awesome, Jackie. A four-way traffic system. 
Uh, the light works at the fourth way intersection right now. Is and he uh, turning on he on sunset. green, yeah. basically? So it is through traffic on both sides. Right now, as you see, it's, it's got a normal pattern from starts from seven seconds, goes out to 14 seconds, and stays around 14 seconds for duration. When we start putting obstacles in front of a sensor, it starts sensing to the program how many vehicles it senses. Right now, we have sent uh, in a program put on only three vehicles. So when it says three vehicles, it starts going. You sent the solar system, so it'll go. It already changed. Uh, that's cool. <laughs> now, it's going to start reading the sensors. It to reads. See. There is those cars that stop right here, right, right here. now. Even though you see, we got green, you see it green. quickly change. Yeah. Then when you count this, you will realize that the, this green light is going to stay longer than the other two that just passed. Mm -hmm. Right now, it senses three vehicles on the southbound. North, southbound and two mm -hmm. vehicles on the northbound. It will let it go for a longer period of time, around 40 to 50 seconds. And we keep on for green for that side. <coughs> Since I realized that the green been long for a while, we just simulate that the cars are moving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we turn and put them around here. One other thing I want to mention is the fact that the green lights are automatic. As you know, when you come up to a line, you just turn, turn left or when you're going. You guys just want to You see, it's already green. green. <laughs> <laughs> it's already green. That's all it was. This is the benefit of oh, yeah. Jackie Sun. Yeah, yeah you guys just want to play with cars. That's, <laughs> that's all it was. <laughs> So now the east and west is going to stay on a little longer now. Yeah, It'll, it will sense three cars. Mm -hmm. The sensor will go into three repetitions, send the three cars, and then it goes into... I didn't. It's not going to worry about the bus stop. If we got a bus stop right here, because most of the people are going to get us. The sensor's range mm -hmm. right now is set, set from 10 and centimeters the not gonna be on the to 30 right. centimeters. They're going to be on the road. And all these variables are programmed to software, which you can change <coughs> just by tapping in a few, changing in a few things. Right now it's saying over there. It goes over here. As you can see, on this side of the road, you can actually place, because usually on a traffic system there is a box that you can place the regulator for the traffic system. You can just put a microcontroller we're using Arduino, obviously, um, and plan the wires to the plan post, like in around prototype. And obviously, you gotta maintain it regularly. Make sure there are no bugs happening in the software itself. Mm -hmm. And in real life, you'll have to add more sensors, mm -hmm. and it will be placed on the road itself, like I said previously in my presentation. So it can sense the vehicles better. Any questions? And the more accuracy. Yeah, brother. Yay! I heard you don't drive that cautious. <laughs> 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 it's, uh, well, first of all, it's, 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 again, it's, it's excellent. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, for all of you, I, 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 I was a witness of all these points being born, okay? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so uh, that's why I'm here today. Just <laughs> I want to see a final product. Um, in this case, well, one recommendation, but I, I know these things would, would come with these ideas after. Uh, the project is, you know, at this stage, okay, and then it's late. Maybe to have some timer or so showing the time mm -hmm. for the lights, you know, that's yeah. very visual. It's clear, but it was it would be better probably. Now, um, yeah. my question is, if that's very good, we didn't talk about that. Mm -hmm. Yes, but when we saw it, really, no, it's not that. Uh, but you know, the numbers all the numbers, help us yeah, the numbers, yeah, much yeah, better. Numbers, yeah. And um, so, okay. This question is for, for everyone, but for you in particular. So, what have you learned here with this project at all level? From teamwork, I, mean, I would say. Yeah, everything. Teamwork, a lot more, teamwork, a lot more coding. Better, better software designs. Yeah. We, we started off with a software yes. that, that was very bare And we realized how everywhere. to soft design software very systematically so that we could change a few things and it will work better. better. Yeah. And breaking into parts. 
especially with the hardware. Jackie helped us a lot. We use Cat fives. Mm -hmm. We had issues when you put it together on the board. It, this platform itself, that the wires were touching reg regularly, and then we sorted that out. And mm -hmm. playing with a microcontroller helps you a lot how to make sure the wiring is correct yes, and at the same time and way to play. We yeah. also realized that we don't have all the time how to start things from the scratch because there's mm -hmm. other thing that's already there. We can just have to put it together and have the logic yeah. to make it work the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. And if it wasn't for this project, we probably would never know that. Yeah, uh, we learned a lot. We, and our team was great. So yeah. we shipped in, everyone shipped in regularly because uh, Jonathan and Clark are doing computer engineering, they have very yeah, software, uh, have good software knowledge. Mm -hmm. Jackie is very good with hardware. I am off. There is nothing like a project, yeah. a project to yeah. really see, see, see exactly. to connect things. Things exactly. yeah. together, yeah. put it together. Absolutely. So it was, it was very helpful to us. So yeah, yeah. all the knowledge yeah. came together yeah. in this part. <laughs> our software knowledge, our yeah. hardware knowledge, because we had work, we had worked with microcontrollers before, and putting in the network and software was very good. But yeah. Was, yeah. Thank you very much. Yay. All right. So let's running outside can be safer and more smarter way. So as as our design we had the vest. Now we want it to make it more realistic because the vest you can see vivid when you're like you run it outside. So we wanted to show you the way you can see the lights. So it's just when you see it with black. When you see black, you can actually see the lights. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you have the vest, it's going to camouflage with the green lighting because it's the same color. So we did it with the black just to, so you can see actually the vivid color of it. So that's, you can go to the next one. So this is the project breakdown. Oh, mm -hmm. me? Yeah. Okay, our project breakdown is basically did as we were supposed to, gave us the different levels of everything we had going on, and showed our time frames that we would take. Uh, most of them we met all the time frames, and everything worked out properly, coming all the way down to the system integration test, uh, which took uh, quite a bit longer than we thought, but everything worked out for us. Um, during our, our project, we came across some ideas about ethical issues that might come up, you know, the legal liability of if you're out there running with a suit and something happens to you, would that come back to us or would it still land the consumer? Uh, having things like the vest, the jacket, gender specific uh, items, um, and, you know, a, a few different things. Uh, the, the obesity thing, that's another, that's a sizing thing we would have to look into for how long our wires would have to be, how long the EL wires themselves would have to be in order to make everything work properly. Our project schedule, this is the, the most recent updated, and it falls right in line with the work uh, <coughs> work plan that we had before. As I said, our system integration test took quite a long. We got all our, pro our, our items, we got the programs mostly going, and then in our, during our system integration, we had to adjust a lot of things that we had, such as the vest being uh, swapped out for a jacket. Uh, this will this ended up being a last minute integration that needed to happen uh, because of the lighting issue when the green was on and it just looked like it was there was nothing there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, the ultimate design, we went we didn't go with the vest. We we, we changed up in the last minute to the windbreaker jacket. Um, the wrist it should be right here yeah, yeah, on the side where this is operating. <laughs> Where you know the accelerometer of the, you know when it's screen it's a, right. The reaction position sensor that's used for this. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the Arduino, the Arduino Pro, because of the size, it's uh, and it had enough ports that we can actually use to, to build it. The mini, uh, it only had three, uh, was it three analog ports, and wanted to make sure that we had the. Was it the outputs that we needed. Yeah, the outputs that we needed. So that's breakdown as usual. Next, simple. Uh, the lithium, same issue that uh, Team B had with the ordering of the the, the battery. Right. So we're also running. We're running on double uh, A batteries instead of nine volts. It seemed to work better. The nine yeah. volt. Yeah. It's a little bit of an issue. Yeah, the nine volt was an issue with the EO lights. Mm -hmm. uh, we can 
like that too, the system that uh, that powers it, it normally will burn up. It do too much would come out mm -hmm. and that would mess up the system so we had to go with the three volt. Mm -hmm. The only issue with that is that because it's not a lithium polymer battery, one we can't recharge it and two, it eats through the battery really fast. Mm -hmm. like you get like about thirty minutes of good use out of it and then gotta change battery. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to speak up for that one? Oh, well, we, we can use this one. Well, here we use, just the way it is here, um, for the analog, we use that, that side to actually receive power and send power to, to the board, to the uh, three, three axis position sensor. It's in, uh, now for the lights, we ended up going with this, uh, with this design on, on the board because there's nothing for the EOR and to create one in the system, it just wouldn't work. It wouldn't, it wouldn't show you how to design an EOR, something that is simple in theory, but when you start trying to put it on there, it becomes crazy because it technically works on the same aspect of the light bulb. Uh, you know, the outside, the filament on the inside, and then the, the power runs through the filament and it creates power because it's a sealed system. All right. Is the simple connection? Yeah, this is, this is the one we were programming it. Uh, during programming, we ran into some, ser into some serious issues with the position sensor uh, for the fact that it wasn't, uh, we, we did a case, uh, nested case, I mean, a, a nested if statement, but it would never fall where it, where it needed to. Some of the values were conflicting, mm -hmm. and it would just uh, trigger the wrong, the, the wrong uh, position, mm -hmm. or it would just not switch the way it was supposed to. So later on, we figured out that our if statements weren't correctly uh, implemented. More in the development stage. And this is actually how, yeah. how it really runs. Like the AA battery is just a relay mm -hmm. for the, the Arduino. So it is connected to the accelerometer. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> um, the three axis the the three axis position sensor or accelerometer, how the uh, company calls it. Uh, the outputs are, are based on uh, analog signals that you're receiving back. So we had to figure out which were the signal, which numbers corresponded to what angle you were at. Everything won by increments of 90 degrees. Um, here it will tell you, can you go into the next one? Here it will tell you, depending if it gave you 662, you'd be at a negative 90 degree, things like that. Uh, that was another issue that we had, so we were able to find this to determine exactly how we were going to read the analog signal for each position that we were at. Next. Keep in mind. These are all the, the, the Initial codes that we decided to use, each one not giving us the results. <laughs> this is the final program. Yeah, so we arrived here. It was pretty much an implementation of the other three codes that got us here. Well, the other like, four codes that got us here, <coughs> reading through those and understanding again and brushing up on our uh, you know, programming oh, languages yes. because it had been about a year since, <laughs> since most of us took a, took a class like that. All right. This is the previous test plan um, for the Arduino, which was we expected to have you know the procedures power on, upload code and run code, which we expected the power is going to be on, upload the code and simply run the code on the screen. And the same thing with the accelerometer and the lights, everything ran smoothly. That's what we expected. That was in the results. The next one. The results is. Yeah. Our results varied. Our results came out to be what we spoke about already. We had issues with the, the accesses. We had issues with some of the lights uh, not doing what they're supposed to do when they were supposed to do it. We had issues with the batteries. We had we had quite a few issues, but we worked our way through them to get down to our our final product. Some of the pictures of us actually going through testing. 
And here are some of our lessons learned. Yeah. <laughs> we develop a solid program first by going through any and all motions of the end user might take. Yeah, so but that, that was important to us because uh, the way our, our system works is based on the position of your arm. Of course, if you're running, your arm changes the position constantly. So uh, taking that to, into account uh, was something we figured out that we needed to do. Uh, we also figured out, like the talking about the LEDs, that was a big thing. The LEDs was pretty tough because of the power that we needed to actually run the LEDs. We had the strips large enough to show any kind of light when you're out there. And the EL wires, they, they glow pretty well at nighttime. So being a nighttime suit, throwing EL wires on there made a lot more sense. And it was uh, more uh, sense, it made more sense power wise. So now we can go to see this the results of our suit. Yes. I see something turning on in the back. I guess you can see that from far away, yeah? Okay, well, <laughs> in the event that everything was working properly, when he put his hand out to the left, uh, straight out to the left, the mm -hmm. left-hand side will, will flash. Uh, oh, there, 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 there it goes. Indicating that that's, yeah, that's the turn that he's, he's planning on making. Mm -hmm. And the good thing about it for the way we did it is it has a hold system in there, so you put your hand out there, It'll catch, and then if you're like riding a bike, you can reach back, back onto your bike, get your stability back. Mm -hmm. And then the same thing for turning to the other side, it'll flash. It's not fucking flashing on the right. Yeah. It'll flash when it catches on the op opposite yeah. side, mm -hmm. and then you can you can go back to what we're doing what you're supposed to do. Yeah. So As a everyone can see that you're signaling go that direction, but you're not throwing yourself off balance or anything. This this uh, project was as of last week was technically complete, and uh, as we for some reason today I came and tried it on, and something, God for sake, in Rima. I saw it working perfectly, so I don't know what what you guys did with the wires. Maybe maybe the battery is low. I don't know. I, I don't know exactly what it could have been, but that's what happened. <laughs> Next time you need to have an extra extra set of batteries. That yes. Yeah. The, as we saw with the hand movement issues, it, it didn't work out as, as easily as planned. So going through more motions and testing it more and more and more to get our parameters set for the code. And then also with the coding to, to be more, I guess, proactive on the coding and trying different ways of making it work early on. Because I think we started with the if statement. Yeah, if statement. And we said, yeah. oh, this works. Yeah. So we kind of stuck with the if instead of trying a while statement or trying case statements uh, and, and seeing what worked out better. We, we, we got what we got, like, all right, it worked and stuck with it. So I think maybe um, a little bit extra testing in the prototype stage. Now that you say that, how was working with uh, accelerometer difficult? What's, what's easy? What's it, difficult? It, 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 in my opinion, because I had worked previously because my job was an accelerometer, mm -hmm. it was simple. 
when you were able to find the values, right? Where you knew what was what would represent a ninety, and and that if you don't have that, yeah, you're kind of just spinning into the wind. Yeah, it, it it would make it complicated. But the the thing is, um, those accelerometer that accelerometer you can't really calibrate it. If you could find one that you could calibrate, depending on the person using it, it would change the the. It would change it in the fact that it would make it simpler to, to make it, you know, how I place my hand, mm -hmm. you know, it'll make it easier to pick up the values, in my opinion, because every time I can't get a, an exactly a consistent, but if you can calibrate it with three or four settings as to, all right, you know, here, I put my hand here every time, this is what you should look for, it'd make it a lot easier if you were able to calibrate it to, to get a better average value depending on the person using it. Mm -hmm. The program, man. Yeah. 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 Well, was there a table, a data sheet available for the accelerometer? You couldn't find that would correspond to real life values? Well, that's what that's Eat. the one that we found where the sorry. Thank the, you. Well you saw the, the ones that we found there, that's as, as close as we were able to get it. And that was uh, given by the manufacturer. Those are the values that they would recommend us to, you know, these these are where you're at. So like I said, the problem with that is being able to determine all the possible outcomes was where um, we kind of, you know, <coughs> should have been more proactive. It's, yeah, it is clear. Been. So you get a bunch of numbers because all you're getting in, in your program is numbers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you have to find a way to say, interpret those numbers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Between uh, here and here, it's going to be a left. And Between here and here, it's going to be a right. And then calibration mm -hmm. definitely well, yeah. could help with that. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> no more questions. <laughs> I have I have so a comment I have a comment project. I have a comment for all the projects. Oh. I think that uh, engineering solutions are imperfect solutions to perfect problems, and there is always a way to prove it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, anytime you're going to start a project, you have to find out what is the state of the art now, so you don't want to reinvent the wheel. That's very, very important because you did a project, it worked perfectly, you turn around, wow, that's much better than we did. Mm -hmm. And this, you know, we worked for this for a year. You know, that's, that's very important. Okay, guys? Thank you. Okay. The, the only thing I have to say is thank God nobody has invented anything that we invented here. <laughs> because their stuff was pretty, was, is unique. I haven't seen anything like that. Yeah. And theirs, they, if, there may be something implemented with the cameras, but the way they have it planned, I think it nice. works a lot better than the outstanding system they have now. Hey, one comment for you guys. Can you make it so it doesn't pick up that idiot turning right immediately? <laughs> <laughs> that guy always changes the light. Oh. And I'm like coming through and he's like, I'm like you just turned. Oh, okay. uh, usually you get three lanes and you can have sensors on the left lane instead of the right. The right, the right turn lane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That right turn lane goes to leave it, leave it yeah. right. Yeah. 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 And then he's gone. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. All right. All right, guys. How are you doing tonight? Good, good. I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, so my name is Duane Adlam, and today we'll be doing our presentation on our senior project. How much of us know people are visually impaired, you know? And then we got one. Here. You know, it's difficult for them to maneuver around when they're visually impaired. So we came up with a concept that make it a lot easier. We came up with the smart eye. The smart eye is a belt we created with different uh, ultrasonic sensors that will pick up objects around the area. These ultrasonic sensors will then send signals to vibrators that we are strategically located around the belt to um, let the person know where the object is coming. We will, now I will have Wilfred and Emmanuel explain the project in more depth. Okay, like he said, it's just a, it's a belt to help the blind navigate around objects. Okay, um, this is a prototype that we have right now. And what it does is, uh, usually, uh, originally we wanted to use six sensors so we could pick up low objects. So with this one here, since it's the prototype, it'll probably pick up objects from about four feet and up, 
You know what I mean? Arm length. Yeah. And uh, when the object gets within about arm length, that's what we measured for you, right? Mm -hmm. Arm length. Um, it'll pick up the object and he'll maneuver around it. Um, with our prototype, we're just using like two 9 volt batteries, ultrasound sensor, Arduino, um, and Some vibrators. And vibrators. We, we build a little power supply for it, and it's DC, so it's safe. There's no AC current, so. Uh, he added the LEDs some, so you could see it all. Yeah, right. we also added some little LEDs for it. I don't know how bright they're going to be in this light. If we do it well in the dark, he'll be able to see. Them. So, okay. Um, so this is basic schematics for it. Basic. Uh, let's see, electrical diagram. Oh, this is the first one we did, right? For the power supply. Uh, yeah. The, this was when we were going through all that headache of working on it and trying to decide what do we do and should we use this belt, that belt. We had a lot of problems finding belt. But for the prototype, we found this workout belt that worked out pretty good. So yeah, this is the electrical diagram. Like right here is usually the Arduino is here. Uh, we couldn't find a little thing in multi synth for the Arduino, so we put a little switch and we say here this is like five volt that will switch on our transistors. Where the LED light is is actually where the vibrators are located. Um, and and this is a power supply. And up until last week, we had issues with the syntax. <laughs> we finally got it straightened out to where it works properly. And if we would have had more time, we would have added more sensors to it. Yeah, because yeah, the belt incorporates both software and hardware. We needed the software so it could pump, uh, so it can convert distance that it's getting mm -hmm. and turn it into the physical vibration for the vibrator so you could locate where the object is located and how far it is. Okay, this is the, the Duino, um, the Uno. Uh, we're using nine volts for power, nine volt batteries, wow. power supply. We're using two of them because uh, this thing consume a little bit of juice if we just use one for the vibrators. Um, originally, we were trying to find um, uh, rechargeables, but uh, they're supposed to come from China, and it takes a while. But for the prototype, the nine volts work pretty good. So, and they um, work, work pretty quick, too. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little messy back then, but uh, it works. For what it is, it works. OK, so you want to give a little demonstration? OK, we'll, we'll give a little demo turn around. Okay, um, we can have money some help from all stockers and stuff. Yeah, we, we need volunteers. Can we get some volunteers? Almost before you guys start, I have to close my eyes so I don't know where you guys are. Well, I'm um, asking. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we need some obstacles. We do. We need some obstacles. Okay, but you need to be a part. Okay. Cheers. Well, uh, we're not going to be that low yet. <laughs> I mean, we can, but. Okay, right here. Okay. So you guys can move. You you can move further back, so it won't be. Yeah, so if he gets here. So they can see that. So, um. And then huh. we'll have you come over here. Right here. Okay. Some of you now stay. Oh, you want to stay yeah, here? yeah, go ahead. You, yeah. you can stand there. Stay here. All right. Okay. So, uh, uh, which way are you going to be going? Oh, you know what? I'm just going to try to get to the door if you got any issues. Yeah, okay. You know what? You yeah, have, him stand, have them stand in between you, you and the here? door. Yeah, I want to try to reach the door. Uh, you stand right here. here. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, okay. So. Do you have blindfold? <laughs> we can put a blindfold. I don't have a blindfold. I can't even touch a blindfold. Uh, blindfold. Huh. Cool. Yeah. yeah. There you are. You can cheat. You can cheat. That's a dirty one. I mean, he was saying, here goes nothing. Hold <laughs> <Okay. laughs> on. Catch them on fire. We're sorry. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, try to put yeah, just in case you guys want to see the light, I'm going to tell you what I feel. So, yeah, okay. Well, I could turn the light off. You can turn it off. I can see the light, actually. Ready? Okay. Uh, right now, I feel. Turn the light off. Yeah, you can see it. 
It's vibrating because it's picking it up and detecting these. Yeah. Uh, the lights will be off now. Okay, just keep, keep on it dark. You didn't feel? Yeah, he's feeling. Uh, he he's like something. Right? Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> it picked him up. Oh, it's like I'm going to pick up four feet. There he goes. Now you do it right. Thank you guys. Um, just a little comment. Whenever you're going to do a presentation like this, you should tell your public this presentation is going to last so many minutes. Okay? Mm -hmm. Just to have an idea. Um, I have a doctor who wants to have something like this developed for her friend who is blind, and he wants to be able to, um, her friend wants to be able to ski with ultrasound. So this will have to work a lot faster and detect a lot more distance. So if you guys want to work on it, we may have an investor for this project, okay? Thank you, guys. I hope you have enjoyed the presentation of this project performed by my advanced students. What makes an award-winning project? An award-winning project must be an innovation, must be patentable, and it must solve real life problems. Any project that complies with these rules will be an award-winning project. An award-winning project is defined before you start by making sure that you comply with those three simple rules. If you try to reinvent the wheel, you will not have an award-winning project. Let's go over some of the details that can make any of these projects that we have seen an award-winning project. Project number one, like we saw in the presentation, it was the traffic light that responds to traffic density. The problem with this is that there are many systems in the market that respond to traffic density because of the hour of the time, etc., etc., etc. Imagine for a moment that you have a traffic light that responds to a user in distress. You feel sick, you want to get to a hospital, and as you approach the traffic light, it turns green for you. So your travel to the hospital will be faster and easier. That, since there is nothing like this in the market, will make that project an award-winning project. Let's see what happened with project number two. That was night light. This was basically a signaling system that will alert drivers that a runner is going to cross the street. There are many signaling systems in the market. What would make an award-winning project in this case, it would be a signaling system that it will not only signal the drivers, but if you are in distress, for example, by holding your hands in a certain position, 
He can light a sign in your back with a 911 call for help, for example. A GPS signal could determine your location so that help could arrive in no time. Since there is nothing like this in the market, that would make this an award-winning project. Let's see what happened with project number three, Smart Eye. The Smart Eye is a system that would allow a blind person avoid obstacles. The problem that I see with this unit is that it would not give a clear view to the blind person on which direction to go because you don't have an indication on how far the obstacles are. Imagine for a moment that in order to make this an award-winning project, we need to enable the blind person to navigate like a bat does at night. A bat flies at night at high speed and is able to avoid trees. Just imagine flying. A blind person who is able to know how far the obstacles are by changing the pitch of an audio signal, it will give them the capability to move fast, avoid obstacles, and know how far they are. That would make this an award-winning project. If you want to know more or are interested in learning how to develop award-winning projects, you are welcome to attend my workshop, Simple Rules to Award-Winning Projects. It will be on Saturday at 10 o'clock in this lab. Thank you.